Hey guys, welcome to the vault. Uh, Leon and Pierre here. Um, we have a very special guest for today's episode. We're uh, bringing back the collector spotlight. We haven't done this um, in a little while, so we have, we've invited Danny V of uh, Tap in Tuesday fame um, to kind of go through some hats. So Pierre, take it away. I fucking love this guy. I love this guy. So listen, I had we, we had to kind of uh, reintroduce the collector spotlight, and there was two folks that I really wanted to usher it in, and uh, Danny, you were one of them. And, um, and listen, man, I couldn't think of a better way to start this. Uh, your, your in-depth knowledge around minor league baseball, the logos, the caps is just amazing to me. Um, and I, this is going to really serve two purposes. Number one, we want to get to know you a little bit. I want to kind of introduce you to the hat community, uh, those in the hat community that may not know you, but also I'm being a little selfish here. I want to learn. So, um, and I think Leon and I were both talking about that. We want to learn about some of these more obscure logos that you've shown us that we don't, we don't even know about. So, um, and, and it's refreshing to have someone like you in the community. That's not just about what's going on right now, but you're also almost like a, like a hat historian, uh, so to speak, like, you know, a lot about minor league logos and logos in general. So this is going to be a fantastic way, um, to kind of get the collector spotlight reignited, but also this is an introduction to, a relationship with views in the vault that's going to continue on with you with um, some uh, some segments that that are going to happen monthly where you're going to show off some stuff that may not be um, uh, things that folks know about. You know, I mean, I think that's what's cool. We're going to do something different. It's not going to be me showing something that everyone's already seen. This is going to be completely different. Um, and I like that. I like that thought. So, um, Danny, why don't you do, do us a favor? Tell us a little bit about yourself and tell us how long you've been collecting for. Well, um, I just want to say thank you, guys. Uh, I'm honored to be the first one to kind of like bring back uh, the collector spotlight. Um, uh, I was born and raised here uh, in Miami, Florida. Uh, I've been collecting hats since pretty much high school. Mm. Um, but it, it was kind of like just here and there uh, throughout the years up until uh, heavily um, once the pandemic hit. And I, I just got into it like crazy from there. Uh, I started mainly obviously with the the major league stuff and then slowly um i got kind of like burnt out i guess on the major league uh, so mm -hmm. many logos so many different colors and uh something about minor league stuff i i happened to see jason uh rocking uh his minor league stuff and always uh you know kind of showing a spotlight on on minor league instead of the major league stuff then obviously john beer um his collection is, you know, insane. So mm -hmm. once I started like really paying attention to the minor league logos and opening that door slowly, and then it just burst wide open and I fell in. And yeah. from there, I think, I think I could speak for other like minor league uh, collectors that once you open that door, it's like never oh. ending. Mm -hmm. uh, you can try to focus on different leagues, um, but it, it'll slow dude it's the, it's the rebranding right it's constantly rebranding changes of colors this and that i mean right. yeah. affiliations, not, changes. affiliations change it's just crazy man it's hard to keep up with but it creates so much variety it's it's incredible exactly and that's that's what captured me like logos for me are, are obviously the more captivating part um mm -hmm. everyone knows the, the the major league logos but there's so many obscure and crazy looking uh, minor league logos that are out there some good some not so great yeah um, but even the weird ones you you just gravitate towards them because it's like how did this even get passed mm -hmm. to through design and then place onto an entire team's uniform yeah, yeah so crazy. some of it is crazy you're absolutely yeah, right yeah. yeah well danny listen man th that was fantastic now why don't we just dive into the meat and potatoes here which is you got you know we asked you to select about 20 hats right Mm -hmm. to kind of show off and, and kind of share a little bit about them. Uh, would you mind jumping into that and kind of showing us what you got? Uh, sure. Uh, let's see if I picked a, a good 20 here. Um, this one I actually wore, I believe, last week on mm -hmm. the uh, tap-in, but it is one of my favorite logos. This is the Columbus Red Sticks. Oh, man. Wow. So this is uh, an Indians affiliate uh, throughout their uh, time. Um, they're actually, is that like a uh, red panda? It's a fox. It's a fox. Is it a fox? Yeah, it's a yeah, fox. That's a, Neil, Neil would love this thing. Oh, Neil is creaming himself. Oh mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh, 
so this particular logo, they were on our hats uh, between roughly about 1998 to 2001. Love it, man. Uh, we were in South Atlantic League. Now, these have been done. Uh, I think TJ actually pointed out to me that um, Hat Club redid this or, mm -hmm. or Lids uh, a while back. But the main difference between these vintage hats and any of the um, retros is the embroidery. Yeah. Like it's sometimes the embroidery is not even close. So if you look at this, this silver embroidery that's on here, that's kind of a little bit like raised. Mm -hmm. The retros are completely flat. They're flat. not metallic silver at all. So it mm -hmm. loses that kind of like depth to, to the, uh, the logo. And then of course, like, these yeah. are all, all vintage. These time made in USA, which I know is a popular thing. Unfortunately, this one is a low profile. That's so, okay, though. I, I understand you have to make some sacrifices it, when you're trying to get some of these old relics. Yeah, as, as kind of I, I, I touched on uh, last uh, the tap in that I'm at the point where these are some of these are take so long to come across that I'll buy okay, yeah, the one that, that I see and then hope that I find it again later mm -hmm. in my size. Uh, so that's the first one. Uh, this is another one of my favorite logos. This is the Bowie Bay Ooh, Sox. That's badass, man. So uh, they wore this logo um, roughly about 1994 to 2002. Mm -hmm. um, prior to becoming the Bowie Bay Sox, they were the Hagerstown uh, Suns um, in wow. the Eastern League. Uh, once again, vintage. This is a this is a great logo. The Hat Club should definitely bring this one back. That's nice as hell. Um, this one was only one year. Mm -hmm. This is the Selena Spurs. Yeah, I'm familiar with this one. Hat yeah. Club did retro this one. Yeah, they did uh, a while back. So they only wore this in 1992. Um, oh, wow. Just one year. This is this is the last season as the Selena Spurs. Uh, when they were in a part of the California League. And interestingly enough, they were a White Sox affiliate at that time. Partially, uh, half of their team was Japanese players. Hmm. So if you ever look up 1992 Selena Spurs, you're going to see a lot of Japanese players on those minor league cards. And this one, no, no Batterman. Sick. Good vintage Oof. green bottom. I feel like Kelly Green has changed over the years. It's yeah, it's a little bit darker. <clears throat> yeah. Yep. Um, this is number one of my favorite. Oh, uh, yeah. Greensboro Hornets. This one I kind of picked mainly to uh, show once again the difference. Difference. Yeah. So this is a vintage one. Um, classic gray has the older uh, new era cap mm. style tag. Uh, I thought when I saw these in the pictures that maybe it was some kind of special edition because it had an American flag, but I think whoever owned this added that afterwards because I think I can probably peel that off. Oh, okay. Uh, so it actually has no batterman. So this is the vintage one. This mm -hmm. is an older hat club. Yeah, I have, that, I have that same one, yeah. But if you look at, let me see if we can try to get both of them in there. If you look at the flat embroider and the hat club one compared to and the hat's at a different angle, right? And the teeth are different. Yeah, it's a little bit. There's slight changes there. That's interesting. Yeah. There's an outline. There's a heavy outline on the, the hat club one, too, compared mm -hmm. to the event. It's interesting because there's no real, like, official way to check up on these things. There's no, like, central, yeah. like, archive, really. No, it's really whatever New Era has for an archive. No, yeah, they, yeah, or whatever have pictures to people happen to upload or something. Yeah, I have to rely on a lot of like grainy minor league cards, baseball uh, cards, yeah, baseball cards to, to see the, the uniforms. Um, here is not a new era cap. This was actually my first and currently only pro line cap. This is the uh, Port City Roosters. Mm -hmm. Um, the fit on this is actually pretty good. Uh, I was kind of concerned, uh, being my first pro line how it was going to fit. So I picked this one up mainly because whoever owned this before looks like they actually attended the game mm -hmm. and inscribed it uh, with the date. Um, sorry, that was upside down. Yeah, 96, right? Yeah, 96. 
So this team only existed uh, for two years. Uh, as a bait shop, I'm not entirely sure <laughs> of the story on the bait shop. I wonder if that was a sponsor. Uh, possibly. Um, I've seen it on the back of a Mudcats uh, hat too, Proline hat. Wow. Proline likes to put the, the parent team mm. um, usually embroidered on the back of their fitted which I think some, some collectors are not too fond of that. Uh, so yeah, so they were 94 and 95. Wow. Um, and that's, that's a rare one. It's, it's hard to find. I know uh, New Era did a hometown collection reissue of that, yeah. um, but to find the actual vintage New Era one, it's a little bit difficult. I think the hometown had like the word in, inscribed on it, right? It wasn't um, just the- Yeah, they have one that had like, Port City Roosters and yeah. the full cock. Lids, lids, re, lids remade that in a white, I think a white two tone. Yeah. There was yeah. a white and green one. I think we have those. Yeah. It was like a clearance special. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Five bucks. <laughs> uh, this is the Charleston Alley Cats. Yep. Yeah. Uh, these are, I got two of them here. It almost looks like the new Britain Rock Cats. Almost. Except this one, this cat looks like he, I don't know, plays jazz. Yeah. <laughs> uh, nice. Pretty cool how they, they did this C, um, and it's basically a curved bat. Who was their parent team, Danny? Uh, their parent team, uh, it's not. Sorry, man. I put I, you on the yeah. spot there. I should have done that. I should have done this that. This particular one, I. I Leon's going to look it up right now. One. I'll look it up. I'll look it yeah, up. Yeah. Sorry, Danny, didn't mean to put you on the spot there. <laughs> Badass hats either way. Yeah, these are both all vintage. Great ass, great hats, man. Yeah. Those were redone too, I think, by Hat Club, right? Yeah, these these have been redone. Um, the parent team, which I, that's why it's I'm drawing a blank now. I was literally just looking at their team store where they they had the uh, reissue of this. Mm. And, um, let me know. Find that one. I think it's the reds. Yeah, I wanted to say the reds, but let me just jump into a snap here. Uh, this this one holds significance because this is what broke the barrier into the dreaded snap territory. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was basically finding a logo, obscure logo, really liking the logo, and I was like, I might not see this in a fitted in my size. Yeah, but you're not doing time. it to wear it. You're doing right. it for the snap to add to, I'm never going to wear. Yeah, you're doing it for the appreciation of the logo and getting it into the collection. So this is the Atlantic City Surf. Oh, um, wow, man. So this is the logo that I saw it and I was like, it made me just be like, mm. oh, forget it. I'm getting it regardless if it's a snap. Yeah. New era. Um. This particular logo they wore from 98 to 2001. Uh, they were part of the uh, Atlantic League. Um, I believe after that, they changed to like a basic, like just A and C uh, font logo, which is mm. pretty, pretty boring. This is cool as hell. But this is an awesome, awesome logo. All right. So I have an answer for the Alley Cats. So 1990, they were the Reds. And then in 90. Five became affiliate of the Royals, and then 2001 Blue Jays, then the Brewers after 2004, mm. and then Pirates in 2009, and then they became West Virginia Power. Yeah. So yep. some of these like lineages is so hard to track, man. Yeah, that's they're, why, they're right? always it's, changing. It's worse. Unless than a it's worse than a family tree, man. For God's yeah, sake. Yeah, yeah. Unless it's like some of the obvious ones or the ones that I'm like more dedicated to collecting, like the Red Sox and Marlins affiliates. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I. I I don't even try to keep track of them because they'll swap. That Port City Roosters, they were uh, affiliates one year with the Royals, and then the the other year uh, they were San Diego Padres. Wow! Yeah. So, it's but they, they had the same too. the same hat, the same hat, yeah. the same colors, and just one year they flip flopped between. Yeah. And there's teams. so many levels too, right? Between the different levels of minor league. And right, right, uh, double A, and so forth. Uh, here is a Charlotte Knights. Holy. Oh, okay. So this is an older one. I think this one has been 
done before. No, Hat Club, Hat Club oh, brought Hat Club? back a different one that's got like almost. Oh, like with sh- the yeah, with the knight, uh, the yeah. K, with the yeah, castle. With that the K. that logo or uh, came uh, after this one. I would think so from the looks of this one. Yeah, this one was, I believe, 1990 is mm-hmm. when they started wearing this logo on their caps, and I think they wore it through uh, 93. That's crazy, man. Yeah, uh, they were part of the Southern League halfway through about 92, and then they switched over to the International League for the final year of this This one. This one has badass, man. Tags. Batter, man. Oof, green ball in there, too. Crazy. Which goes great with the green mm-hmm. on the actual logo there. Yeah, Kelly Green doesn't look like that no more. <laughs> it's it's a lot darker. Yeah. Uh, this one is the Wisconsin Timber Rattlers. Mm-hmm. This is a great one too. This one is actually a recent ad. I, I was mainly looking for the flip of this one where it was black. And then the the maroon brim. Jeez. <laughs> not not too obscure. No, man. That I mean it's obscure enough. Yeah. That's one of those rare teams that hasn't really changed its branding ever since the nineties. Yeah. That's there, where there's, there's there's some of those still around. Like like the Durham Bulls. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Durham Bulls is a staple minor league team at this point. Well, the Pawtuck- uh, Pawtucket Red Sox were like that for so many years too, right? From the mid seventies mm-hmm. up until just recently mm-hmm. now this one well these i kind of couldn't pick <laughs> or eliminate oh no sorry man so this i'll show the placeholder or, or cue card for these i bought a snap and this is just going to go right into oh, it the arizona, arizona fall league, league. Okay. arizona okay. fauna league so are you show scott are you gonna show scottsdale no, I let the Scottsdale out because everybody knows Scottsdale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody's yeah. seen that because of Jordan. So that's always been redone. So let me get the snap out of the way, which is the only snap one luckily I have. This wow. is uh, the Tucson Javelinas at this period in time that they wore uh, this, which was around 92, 93. Uh, they're currently the Peoria Javelinas. Mm. Um, but this logo, the detailing on the embroidery, you can see like the actual fur. Looks like a warthog. Yeah, let me see. It's a feral pig. I think it's better if I turn off the background monitor. Yeah, there you go. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. It's not just a flat blob. So what kind of hooked me just on my OCD was trying to get the vintage ones that still had the Arizona Fall League tag in them. Wow. Even if it, even if it's a snap. But luckily, that's the only snap that I had to get so far. Um, next up is the Sun City's Solar Socks. Wow. You know, levels of embroidery there. Yeah, this one was a surprise. This one, I kind of like made a deal on three of them. And this was the one that I least, I guess, was caring about. Mm-hmm. But when I got it in hand to see the actual gro- uh, yeah, embroidery on crazy. here, no batterman. So again, that vintage green. Wow. It's almost turning teal. It yeah. almost looks like. Almost, yeah. That's crazy. Then you have. It looks smoother, too. When you see an old vintage Kelly green, like the, the undervisor even looks smoother. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah, the, the uh, fabric is different. Yeah. Uh, this one is not one of the original ones. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. This is the. At this time, the Phoenix Desert Dogs. Um, they wore this roughly around from 1995 to 2012. Mm. Um, prior to this, they were the Chandler Diamondbacks. And that's like a two-tone, right? Like a navy with black? Uh, nope. This is no? all, all black. All black. Oh, okay. Gray bottom. Shoot. Wow. Arizona tag. Chandler is the only one that I'm mi- missing of the original. Then you have this one, which was probably my my favorite. This at this time was the Mesa Saguaros. Uh, yeah, it, over time it became more of a cartoony cactus. Yeah, now now they're the surprise Saguaros, yeah. and they have that kind of like cartoon one that yeah. that haven't ha- did recently. 
get the embroidery. Embroideries. Yeah, that's cool, man. No batterman. Arizona tag. The hats also back then felt thinner and more pliable, mm -hmm. you yeah. know? Yeah. Not as, yeah, they're not as thick. Not the as structured. Definitely thinner. The brim's definitely yeah. They're a little bit like flimsy but that flimsy sounds like you're kind of like it's that. almost it's it's more like it's i think it's easier to manipulate those brims yeah, yeah. It, it definitely is um that and yeah. i guess the age of it has uh, kind of broken them in this is the last one uh that i'm yeah. showing uh, besides um the scottsdale one so this one is the tempe rafters mm -hmm. at this time 93 to 96 and i think now they're the salt river rafters i've got two different versions of that the new one though that hat yeah. club did it like three years ago maybe it has like an outline on the waves yeah that's good it's a good looking hat yeah it's smooth and nowadays like any um arizona fall league hat you get has an mlb batterman on it mm -hmm. yep yep no, none of these had a batterman none of them um let me see what should go with next. I was getting Just, uh, to sale. Um, a couple of years ago when they were changing all the logos, they were selling them in hand for thirty dollars a set. Get really? Set for thirty wow. bucks. Yeah, only in person though. That's a pretty good deal. Um, I'm going to show this one. This is not a new era, and this is almost like unstructured. Okay. Uh, I actually reached out to Jason about this logo because I could not figure out what it was. This is from Arizona Valley Vipers. They only it's like a platypus with teeth almost. <laughs> almost like a really cartoony snake. Yeah. Interesting. It's got piping and everything. That's crazy. Yeah. What brand is it? This one is California Headwear. Wow. Which definitely seems like something you would find like at a gas station. Yeah. It's like got the Diamondbacks A, but upside down too. Right. So at that time, it don't, they competed with almost like the, the Diamondbacks for fans, mm. which was not really a, a great decision because they only lasted in the year 2000. Mm. Uh, this was an in independent league, Western Baseball League, and that was it. They, they pretty much were non-existent after that. So I'm pretty sure that a new era of this one does not exist. I mean, I couldn't even find what it was to begin with. And then I definitely couldn't find any pictures of any crazy people man. like players wearing this uniform. Um, this is the one that I was looking for um, a long time. Oh uh, yeah. This is the Springfield uh, Sultans. Um, this logo about 94 to 95. Ball. Yeah, I've seen their hats, but I haven't seen that specific logo before, though. Yeah, they did a home team one. I think it was yeah. like gray and that hometown black. collection with lids. Yeah, yeah. But once again, the differences on the vintage ones is going to be the embroidery. That's a that cool silver. logo, man. That's a cool logo. The, the metallic silver is not. Oh, no, I can, on the, on I can see. I can see. Yeah. And just how it kind of weaves through the sword. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. They definitely made them different back then. Yeah. Yeah. They, that, what I've noticed, one of the main things, if, if the vintage logo had metallic silver on the cap, for whatever reason, when they're redone, they, they don't do it with the metallic silver. Mm. So I don't know if, I don't know how it is in the catalog for a new era, if they just look at pictures and they just try yeah, to get the basic guess. part of the design yeah. and as you can see, unless I hold it up right next to the camera, you won't be able to tell that it's metallic yeah. silver from yeah. the pictures. They're they doing just, they're 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 just looking for the they have primitive ways of finding it only because there's no other way to find it, you know. Right. Unless you have them luckily, you know, in hand, you can tell. Mm -hmm. Uh let me see down to the last couple here. Which one is more rare? <laughs> so let me Everything you've shown has been this rare, one. I think. Man, <laughs> at this, uh, point. this one, this one uh, hurt in a way, but I was also I had to have it. Um, 
This is the Southwest mm. Michigan double race. Wow. So you notice it has the little. Yeah, what's that say down there? SW. Oh, SW, yeah. Southwest. Southwest. Uh, gray, green bottom. They only existed for uh, two years. Um, mm. It was 2005, 2006. Yeah, 2005, 2006, so Midwest League. But, Crazy. Yeah, the, all of the Rays minor league ones are, are great. And some of them, such as this one, are a little bit harder to come across. Leon, well, yeah, uh, this has some, been some crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. Definitely. It's like a history lesson. Yeah, it is. I like it. This one here, I'm not entirely sure how rare it is. Yeah. It might be the rarest one, maybe. Um, I was told it's a Gulf Coast League. Um, and when the Gulf Coast League is basically like the lowest, like it's like, I think a, a rookie league. Like rookie ball. So finding any pictures, I don't even think they made cards from Gulf, Gulf Coast League um, teams or affiliates. Oh, oh shit. Wow. Looks like the Cubs logo. Yeah. At first glance, you would just think, oh, this is just a custom, like Cubs, whatever yeah. year that was that they had this. Mm-hmm. The great thing is about the embroidery on here. Oh, wow. Fur, yeah, fur. It's texture. Yeah. yeah. You might have thought, but what seals the deal and lets me know that it definitely is minor league. It is mm. has the batterman. I have never seen this ever again. And I can't find any pictures of <laughs> Cubs minor league. And it's in good condition. Player. Too. Yeah. Cubs minor league player. Or any. Cubs minor league with this logo. Insane. So it could be rarer than I think it is. And I already think it's pretty, pretty rare. Okay. Uh, let me go with this one first. Okay. Um, this one is extremely rare to find this team and this logo. And if you're not looking carefully, you might just completely breeze by it. Um, it's not new era. Oh, oh shit. Wow. It's an e. This is the Elmira Pioneers. So remember how I was telling Elmira, you. Elmira is an Elmira is were Red, Red Sox. Sox affiliate, yeah. And they went to the Marlins um, from 93. This particular logo they wore from 93 to 94. Um, there might be one that's either equally rare um, or rare than this one. For one year, 95, um, where it had like some weird, like wagon, Oregon Trail looking logo mm. on it. And they only wore it that one year. This is this cool one. as hell, man. I so, think Ellis Burks, Mike Greenwell, I think some of that era of Red Sox player played on Elmira when they were a Red Sox affiliate. Yeah. This one I had to have for obvious reasons. So cool. Dude, man. Even being a DeLong didn't mm. matter. That, it, that kind of even sold it onto me more that it had the tags because for sure I'm not going to wear it. Um, no batterman, just simple white. Wow. Badass. I love old logos like that that just look like MLB yeah. logos, but just That's, altered a little bit. Yeah, those are the ones that I, I love the most. The ones that are, just look like the parent team, pretty much. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Uh, and this one, this one, I'm... I'm considering the rarest in my yeah. collection. Um, I don't know if you remember, Pierre, I reached out to you a while back um, before we got to know each other. And oh, yeah. This is the Glens Falls mm -hmm. Tigers. We were talking about how much you should pay for it, right? Right. Right. Because I don't, I don't believe I'll ever come across this hat again. Mm -mm. I don't think I've even seen someone else have this hat. And I'm not even sure if it's a uh, um, worn hat. Crazy. You can see it has the old, old, like, size. The size tag. Size yeah. Tag. Yep. Damn. That was probably right after leather sweatbands. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say. This, this was the oldest in my collection until I had that. 
I added that Oakland Oaks. Um, yeah, this has got to be directly after the leather sweatpants. Yeah, and there's a, sh I mean, it has it written on there, but you can never tell if that was a player that wrote on it or or whoever owned it before Glen Falls, mm -hmm. but um, collecting uh, minor league mm -hmm. uh, Detroit affiliates, specifically Tigers. Um, I had to have this one. Uh, the only one that I'm missing is the Bristol Tigers. Ooh. And I just missed out on one not too long ago, which kind of hurt. I was starting to believe that it didn't exist because <laughs> as far as I could tell, the Bristol Tigers uh, B looks like the Birmingham Barons B. But what confirmed on the one that I recently missed out on was that the batterman on the back had the Detroit colors on it, the split with the navy and the orange. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I have obviously Connecticut, uh, London, um, Lakeland, Oneonta, which I missed out on a, a vintage one of those not too long yeah. ago. Which the Connecticut Tigers, now. the Connecticut Tigers are no more. Yep, they're, they were the Norwich Navigators. No, they're, they're the sea unic they're the sea unicorns now, right? Or right, the, right. I'm sorry. Yep. Or the narwhals, whatever the hell it is. I don't know the which one. Sea unicorns. Call. That's what it was. Yeah. yeah, and they're kind of. I went. I went to that stadium. It was probably the worst baseball experience I've ever had. Yeah. <laughs> one of the, in my Bayou, research right? close by you. No, no, it's not close by. I mean, it's a few. It's like an hour and a half from here, but okay. it was. It's listen. Some of those like really like a a level ball teams. Like the the parks are like they're like high school parks, man. That's crazy. Yeah, one of the teams that I didn't show because I had posted to my page um, a while back. That's one of my favorite logos is the River City Rumblers, mm. which if you remember, Toppers uh, did that not too long ago. Yeah, that's another one where the metallic silver is completely different like if if you look at the pictures that i posted on my page the embroidery is completely different like it almost makes the the, the retro look like a bootleg mm. like not even the same um but going off of like the that last one the detroit one i um i'm like into that enough where i'm obviously buying like jerseys and other pieces uh programs um this Specifically, Glens Falls. Random. Oh, wow. Glens Falls, Tigers. Oh, that's crazy. Cup. That's how you could verify the hat. <laughs> Back in the day. It's like you're like an investigative journalist piecing it all together, you know? Yeah. Oh, man. What? Damn, man. <clears throat> that's crazy. Damn. Glens Falls, Tigers. Obviously, that's one of my, if not my favorite logos. So we have Glens Falls. A little pocket schedule of London. Um, and I also have this from Lakeland, this mug. Oh my God, man. Yeah. Like Insane, tigers. man. Dude, this was spec this was uh, this was amazing stuff, Danny. I mean, this is this is just this is just the introductory introductory um show. So this is Listen, I can't think of a better way to start this off, Leon. Mm -hmm. This is fantastic, man. You took us on a, on quite the little journey there, Danny. And um, I'm excited to see what's next. But, again, this was incredible stuff. Um, for those of you watching, um, you've got Danny's uh, Instagram in the lower left corner of his screen. We'll put it into the description of the video. Um, you should be following him. Um, he pops in on our tu Tap in Tuesdays quite often to, uh, I don't know, kind of level things out. You got a lot of hype pads, you got a lot of crazy stuff. And then Danny comes in with a little history lesson. So um, Danny, this was fantastic. We appreciate having you in the hack community. I appreciate all you've done for me personally with helping with some assists and whatnot. Um, you got some great stuff coming out with sneaker town um, that you've kind of helped um, develop. So if, if you haven't seen the video out there, everybody go check out that sneaker town um, kind of sneak preview. Um, it has some more recent hats, but then it has something that's coming in the near future. Um, from Danny and Sneaker Town, which is incredible. So go check that out. Um, any last words, Leon, before we wrap up for the evening? No, just, you know, um, 
appreciate you coming on, Dan. You know, like people who collect, you know, the vintage M- MILB stuff, I know you guys can find a needle in a haystack. You guys are always looking at the different uh, secondary sites, whether it's like Poshmark, Macari, eBay, yeah, it's non-stop, offer up. Yeah, non-stop yeah. hunting. Yeah. So, you know, I, but, you know, I, you know, I admire you guys. You know, you guys, you can find anything. So, you know, yeah. keep it up. Yeah, Danny. Th- thanks again, Danny. We appreciate it. Leon, how about you take us away, big fella? Yeah, let us know in the comments, you know, which of the hats that Danny showed are, are, you know, catching your eye. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Drop a like on the video. Podcast available on all major streaming platforms. Fusionofvault.com for official merch. For Leon, Pierre, and Danny, we out, guys. Stay fitted. See you, everybody.